Happy Father's Day, everyone. It's Sunday, June 21st in Los Angeles. And I promised you guys that I'm gonna come back <laughs> for Father's Day. And uh, I wanna wish um, all the dads out there a happy Father's Day. All the caretakers who might be moms, but they do act like dads. Um, happy Father's Day to you. And uh, I wanna thank my husband first because um, he, um, he has been supporting me for all these years that I have come back to school and learned everything. And uh, um, I became, you know, who I am now. So I found my passion and without my husband's support, I could not have been here. So, hello, Khosriel Monifi. How are you, my dear? Happy Father's Day. Um, and Manu Chera Haikimi, happy Father's Day to you. So nice to see you guys here. Um, then, after saying happy Father's Day to my wonderful husband, um, I want to start from my dad. Um, you all might have seen the post I had. Um, um, sent out last night um, because thank God he's home. Um, glad to have him back home. Um, my father-in-law, we had a very nice session with my father-in-law today um, on Zoom with my uh, in-laws, uh, my brother and sister, brothers and sisters, in-laws, and it was wonderful to see everyone and the grandkids. Um, happy Father's Day to my son. Um, he's a dad <laughs> to wonderful grandson that we love dearly. And I was telling a friend of mine that any time that I have an issue, that I have fears, yeah, <laughs> um, like being in the tunnel um, in uh, the MRI machine, um, that was the only thing that saved me, basically th thinking about Julian, my grandson. And... Um, uh, imagining his face and uh, how he says grandma and all that. So this is, um, anyway. Oh. Oh. I'm very emotional. Sorry for that. But uh, um, hi, Mimi John. <laughs> anyway, um, so I was um, telling my friend that... Um, when I have a fear or um, stress or anything, um, ooh, thinking about my grandson is what saves me. I know, I mean, I have wonderful children. They are lovely. Everybody is beautiful and wonderful. But um, something that a little boy or a little girl has, that um, the way they act around you, is so beautiful that uh, that saves me basically when I'm not in a you know <laughs> in a perfect mood. <laughs> anyway, so, so let me say hello to Sue. Um, anyway, um, I wanted to um, to read a part of my book for you guys because um, if you have been following me, I have told you that. Um, Making a Commitment for Love is my book, my first book. I'm in the process of actually finishing up uh, some last minute stuff and uh, publish my second book, which is my dissertation. And um, it is about psychoneurology of relationships. Most probably the name of the book is gonna be Psychoneurology of Relationships. I couldn't find anything better than that. But, um, as I always say, my book, uh, my book's last chapter, chapter 11, is uh, about, it's your life, not your parents' life. And um, the, it's a beautiful chapter. Um, the, I have written a couple of things about my family and, you know, how I was brought up. So today, I, if Father's Day is one of the best times for me to read a few uh, paragraphs. Um, I will be quick, so you can go ahead and have fun with your family. Um, 
the this part is just um, I'm reading it because I'm sure some of my cousins are going to be watching this later. So it's a good reminder of uh, our childhood as well. And I am who I am first and foremost because of my upbringing and who my mom and dad are as individuals and their relationship with each other and their extended family. Of course, I was fortunate enough to be educated in some of the best private schools in Iran. And at that time, my parents were more financially stable compared to when my siblings came along. My parents are, without a doubt, my most favorite couple and my best friends. I remember as a little girl that our front door was always open to aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, and neighbors to spend leisure time, enjoy tea, sweets, and fruit. And then whenever one group left, another group would stop by for a meal, perhaps. Some of my cousins would stay with us for months right before the Iranian revolution uh, because my aunts and uncles were no longer in the country. We were all as close as siblings could be. In my teen years, I knew that I had to finish high school with good grades as we would eventually migrate to the land of opportunities, America. Even my brother's friends were always checking on us while both of my brothers were studying in the States. I used to call my house the Hotel Tale. Uh, sorry. <laughs> my dad had an important export business back then. He's a still the same generous, spiritually practicing Jewish man he was. when I was growing up, admired and respected by our community. He continues, or I mean, right now he can't, but this, this was written a few years ago. He continues to work as an accountant for my brother's factory. And in his old age, quote unquote, I thank God that his mind is still sharper than the rest of ours. Honestly, this is amazing because um, he can't remember anything and everything more than us uh, put together be <laughs> because nowadays we are becoming too lazy. We have to write all the dates of birthdays and anniversaries and everything down. But um, my dad knows them by heart. So, um, I thank God that his mind is still sharper than the rest of ours, and he's still the person everyone seeks for guidance when they have issues. He writes anonymously for a Persian magazine and answers people's questions on different topics, especially relationships. Interesting, huh? I turned out the same way. Um, Yes, that's my dad. <laughs> the magazine sends him gifts in appreciation for his contributions to the Iranian community. The other day, for example, I was supposed to mail 17 letters for my dad and found that 16 out of 17 envelopes were going to different charities around the world, while only one envelope was addressed to a utility company. My dad donates food to needy people all the time with each other. The funny thing is when he was in the rehab, we would have, uh, he would ask my brother and my mom to do the same thing. So um, never changed. Um, he, he will, yeah. <laughs> Um, my dad donates food to needy people all the time, especially around high holidays when families celebrate with each other. He will even ask each one of us 
if we would like to participate anonymously. My dad has become extremely fragile. And walks mostly with a cane or walker for support, but uh, he is still strong and independent. He takes good care of himself, physically and spiritually, and I'm proud to be his daughter. So anyway, I mean, um, I'm, I'm emotional. I'm actually extremely happy. Um, I know that I'm crying, <laughs> but that's me, the people who know me. Um, it's really a blessing that uh, he could survive all the stuff that have happened to him since um, President's Day, February 17, that he went for a bleeding ulcer um, to the hospital. And then he went to the rehab. And then he caught pneumonia. Thank God it wasn't COVID. And after he was uh, feeling better, after a few uh, weeks, he went to, um, to the rehab. And as you all know, COVID hit hard. So thank God the rehab was not affected by, by that, but uh, we couldn't visit him there. So it's really a blessing that he's back. And um, he can actually uh, try to walk by himself on, with a walker. And we are blessed to have some, view, some amazing caretakers that are staying with him 24 hours a day at home with my mom and uh, um, uh, another lady who's helping them. So anyway, um, just wanted to read that to you guys uh, because it's very important to me. I see that uh, my other friends are on. Uh, Mehran John, happy Father's Day. Uh, Fari Bojan, and thank you for being here. Benjamin Davidi, happy Father's Day because you're amazing and uh, you're always there to support me as much as you support your children. I know that. Um, anyway, um, I would love to... Oh my God, my cousin from England, Nazilia. Oh, love you. Melody Meravi, oh my God, you're going to be a future mom. Oh, my brother is watching. Hey, thank you for watching. This one you have to reshare, I bet. Anyway, so uh, Moise, happy Father's Day again. I told you I have a surprise for you. So um, go have fun. We're going to have a barbecue. My son and grandson and my amazing daughter-in-law are going to come over. And of course, my husband is going to be doing that because he's a great cook. And yeah, you're all invited to come. <laughs> so uh, go enjoy yourself, have fun, enjoy your Father's Day, and uh, I'll be back soon to talk about other interesting stuff. And this time, maybe I don't cry like a little girl. I'm only become, I mean, in a couple of weeks, oh no, less than a couple of weeks, I'm going to be 60. So if you take the zero out, I'm the six-year-old. Love you guys. Happy Father's Day.